We. I enjoy doing that. <laughs> I'm going to miss it one day and just hit the ground in a snotty heap and die. G'day people, this is with Monster Dad, and welcome to our single player survival series of Space Engineers. Now, I did a bit of work off camera on the base. Um, this time you may see, may actually notice some changes unlike last time. Um, and after I've given you a quick tour of the base, we are building a mining ship. And I've been saying that for I think at least three episodes, uh, never got around to doing it. But let's go. So this is the back end, well, let's say the back end of the base, back end of the existing base at the moment. Um, this will be built upon. I think I've got enough hydrogen for all this. This is the hole we blew out last episode. Um, I've just stuck a shape around it. Can't really get things circular in Space Engineers. I nearly said Minecraft then. Uh, can't really get things circular in Space Engineers. So it's going to be more like a, an octagonal building, this one. And it'll go up and then come out all the way around with some sloped glass windows, very much like a control tower. Um, and that will control all the hydrogen processing that will go on around this lake, which will all be automated using remote controls, timers, and drones and drilling platforms. I moved the solar panels to this side because I needed to get a place where I could connect the the big rover, Salvage One, as I'm still calling it at the moment. I put a bit of cladding around Salvage One along the same sort of colour and rib scheme that I put on the small rover. And I also continued that ribbing scheme around the base so I, I, this isn't a complex design by any standards basically all I've done is put a shell around what we'd already built and then put ribbing across it and I like the ribbing because I thought it gave it that kind of reinforced feel and we are on a, a pirate planet with lots of hostiles so I figured it would make sense to have that reinforced feel to the base um, I haven't put any base defences up at the moment, but I've got an idea about those, which I'll talk about in a minute. Although I have put a Gatling gun on the top of Salvage 1, because that will go out further away from the base, further than probably most other vessels that we have to do salvaging, so it needs to be able to protect itself. Continued this ribbing theme all the way up here, did a bit of colouring. Um, I thought about doing the similar sort of colouring as we've done to the, the Rovers and the Recon 1, but I thought that would probably be a bit garish, um, so I kept it a bit more subtle. Yeah, black building with lots of orange ribbing on it, I think it's probably going to be just too much. It'll look like some kind of freaky alien caterpillar, I think. <laughs> yeah, nevertheless. Yeah, so that's why I moved the solar panels over here, added another couple of solar panels. Um, yeah, put it on a nice little stand. You can't see it at the moment. When it's night, we'll have a look at this because I've put some lighting around it as well. Um, but we'll see that when it gets dark. This row of blocks here, I don't like this. Um, what I'm going to do is dig under here, dig a trench underground, ouch, all the way to here, and then bury the connecting blocks under the ground and then remove these and then that way it'll look like the solar panels are, are, are like standalone solar panels but they'll still be connected to the base but yeah I'll do that at some point I don't I just don't like it being joined up like that I added this the ladder with a small cargo container that connects directly to the the goods out cargo container so that I can access stuff when I need to when I'm working around the base save me running in and out of the base so that's why that's there let's take you for a tour inside yep yeah, so I haven't put a button this side to open this hangar doors from the outside yet we'll go inside okay so I, I kept these passageways, these windowed passageways that I'd first put in so that we could see into the two rooms as we go through. Um, the, 
The outside of the base I think is looking okay. The inside of the base still needs a lot of work. Um, I've got the basic shape detailing for most, well for these two rooms anyway, but I haven't done any shading or colouring, um, so that needs some work. I, yep, program block, programmable blocks can have, can run down this way. Uh, I put another couple of batteries in and moved the control chair into here and got rid of the med bay from in here as well. My intention is to turn on the LCD information at some point. It would be nice to be able to get that done today, but the mining vessel is the priority today. The rover room hasn't really changed a lot. Uh, again, finished the roof with the detailing and the, and the walls, but haven't colored it at all, which still needs to be done. Hooked up the doors with a button. I need to make these sensors eventually, but yeah, I'll do that at some point. Oh, what a lovely bright sunny day. Very cool. Let's leave the doors open. Let a bit of air into the garage. I was thinking of making this a kind of maintenance walkway underneath it. I'll have a think about that. It wouldn't function as anything at all, but it's just for, you know, for looks mainly. So that's these two rooms. Um, still a bit of work to do on the colouring, as I said. Here, I've put up a light and just coloured these. There's nothing much there. Again, I've got the roof on it, but there's from this point onwards, I haven't done anything with the detailing of the inside. The inside's still pretty horrible at the moment. Um, put a row of lights along there. So there's windows down each side here. Again, the walls really need to be finished, and so do the floors as well. Um, but at the moment it's all nice and functional. Yeah, it's getting there. But I think that with regards to building, I need to stop now because I just keep having to go and get more iron and digging that manually is just a pain, so we need the mining ship. Ah, my eyes! So out here, what I've done is move the med bay here, so these two areas here will become sort of utility rooms. Um, this one will be like a med room, and this one I was thinking maybe turn it into some kind of bedroom or something. Um, I've got a couple of furniture mods on, so yeah, we'll just make use of this end space here before we enter this tower building that will be here. Um, these are red. All of these are red so that the bobs ignore them and don't build them because this won't be remaining here. This will be like an open, open hole going down there where we can do drone manufacturing. When the drones are completed, they can just fly out. So yeah, so that's that. So there we go. That's um, what the base looks like at the moment. I think it's coming along nicely. This here is just the connector for the mining vessel so it can deliver its goods and again, that's connected directly through to the goods in, um, as is that one that the salvage one is connected to. Yeah, so good. Um, regards to base defence, I don't want to cover this thing in turrets because I think the turrets are a little bit ugly. I was looking at the terrain around, and in actual fact, we've got this elevated rise all the way around here. Um, um, I, d I, yeah, I think we're fairly protected from that way because we're not going to do any exploration that way for a little while I don't think but what we could do over here and I'm really tempted to do in fact I'm going to is I'm going to make some ind independently powered pillboxes so there'll be like a, a row of pillboxes going around the outside of that hillside that will protect the base so if we do accidentally get drones to spawn and they follow us back and recon one or whatever we're flying in then I better watch my hydrogen, oh, I've got plenty then these pillboxes will take them down before they get close enough to the base to do any damage and I think that's the way to go they won't look odd because this base will stretch out this way and I'm tempted to do a similar building on the other side of this tower as well that will house more like utilities and things like that or maybe the hydrogen processing area because this isn't big enough to process the hydrogen that I'm planning to process in this particular base. Um, we're talking about tens of millions of units of ice that needs to be processed 
into liquid hydrogen. So, yeah, it, that, we're going to need a dedicated area to process that and a dedicated area for the drones to fly to. So, we'll probably repeat this design on the other side of this tower and dedicate that side purely to hydrogen processing. I hope that all makes sense. I think it's coming along nicely. Yeah, cool. Okay, mining ship. Let's get to it. First of all, what I want to do is turn off the bobs. Wee! I enjoy doing that. <laughs> I'm going to miss it one day and just hit the ground in a snotty heap and die. So make sure they're off in salvage one. They are. Let's turn you off. Do I have enough stuff? Wow, am I really down? Oh no, I've got 72,000 kilograms of iron there, good. Steel plate, how many motors? 900. Should be okay. Yeah, should be good. I made myself some upgraded tools as well, um, as you can see down there, because we got that platinum from that crashed vessel that we salvaged. I tend not to make a tier 3 uh, grinder because they're just too fast and I end up grinding things that are behind whatever I'm grinding as well so I tend to stick to the tier 2 grinder. It's about the right speed for grinding to not make silly mistakes. Okay so Bob's in there so that tree's in the way, that bush. I think this will probably be a very good spot to build our mining ship. So as I mentioned I want to build a vertical miner. So vertical miners against horizontal miners, they, they both have their pros and cons. Um, I personally prefer the vertical miners. What am I looking for? A landing leg. Um, yeah, I mean, if you wanted me to, one episode, what I could do is go into creative and show you my build for a horizontal miner as well. If you want, if you wanted to see how those are built, just let me know in the comments and I, I'm more than happy to do that. But as I say, I'd probably do that in creative and then just get rid of the, the, the vessel, just to give an example of how to build one. Um, I do have a tiered thruster pack, which I'm going to use it's not absolutely necessary, so don't feel you need to put this thruster pack on there. If I can find them. What do I want? The atmospheric thruster. I'm just going to go for the... Where is it? Tier 1. Tier 1 atmospheric thruster. Got there eventually. Right. What else do we want? Um, drills. That'd be handy. I haven't tried out any drill mods yet. <clears throat> I've been fairly happy with the vanilla drills, to tell you the truth. I'm going to put a large reactor on this, or a large small ship reactor. And what else do we need? Initially, get it started. Let's put a medium cargo container. So. Start off the usual way. Let's pop that down. And this will be an arm to build it onto. That landing leg will not remain on this. Make sure I've left myself enough space for these drills. Yeah, good. Good, good, good. Right. Um, do you know what? I think I want to go up one more. Okay, so... Ouch. 
basically what we do is a little rectangle um, thrusters in the center drills around the outside easy as that so let's put a couple of thrusters on and these are going to be large tiered one line them up properly okay cool um, and that should be enough lift when it's full of stuff let's get rid of those two things and let's put some more conveyor type stuff we need the small conveyor tubes um, what we should do is at the moment we figure out where things are going. So what will happen now is basically we'll build a frame around these thrusters and on that frame the drills will sit. Now some of this frame will end up being changed to conveyor blocks but at the moment let's just pop that in like that get our drills see where we can fit those so what I tend to do is put either four or six drills and I think four is probably going to be enough for this one so let's get something to put them on at the moment That'll all be removed, or most of it. So let's give it a bit of space. We'll pop that drill there. Okay, what's in the way of that? Right, okay. So the frame really needs to be up here rather than down there. Let's make sure this doesn't disconnect. I hate working with these frames of these uh, models. I can I always get lost as to where I am. As I said a couple of episodes ago, it's trial and error most of the time with these things. Once you sort out the first few aspects of the build then the rest of it tends to fall into place oh I just destroyed all those components as well didn't I Oh, mind you, it wasn't a lot of components. Let's try that again. All right, back to square one. Let's see if we can get this drill back on again. Now, where do we want this? there. Boom. Um, we should put six drills on this. Let's go for six drills. There. Three either side. They don't need to be that close together, the drills, but, you know, what the heck. Attach this one as well. Put it there. Try and line it up. There, wasn't it? Yeah. Right. That's the difficult part done. <laughs> it probably shouldn't have been as difficult as that, though. Yeah. Good. 
All right, let's get these rid of these drills. <coughs> Excuse me. Um. Okay. So with these thrusters, you can put something directly on top of a thruster. You just can't put things underneath thrusters because otherwise they'll get burned. So on top of that, what should we go with first? <clears throat> Let's go with a cargo box um, and get the weight displacement correct. Uh, yeah. known I needed interior plate. Alright, that should be everything I need. Go for a large cargo box. It's not going to be exactly central, which is going to annoy me, but it is what it is. Yeah, we'll go with that. Yeah. And then... It's going to be a tall ship, this is. Mind you, you know, a vertical miner is a, a long ship, so... Uh, this, These all need to be plumbed in together. Um, so that's why I've connected the reactor directly to that small connector on that large cargo box. So let's clear a bit of our space there. Get some of the other essentials. We need a connector. We need a cockpit. Because um, we'll fly this one. This one won't be automated. Um, I'll leave a gyro for a moment. Must remember to put a gyro, gyro on this one. I'm not going to bother with battery power because we've got enough uranium to to do this, and that's just adding weight and and mass and volume to the actual build. Yeah. Now the problem with the cockpit is it has a big connector at the bottom. Um, so we need a way to connect that to the system. Right, okay. I know how to fix this. We're going to make it longer. Uh, we're going to put... three of these thrusters on. Um, now we could just separate the drills slightly. Yeah. Okay, we're going to separate these drills slightly. They don't need to be really close together. Um, let's find the drill again. Dill? Let's go for drill. that there is to so they've got something to connect to at the moment so let's try and get them evenly separated what's that that's like halfway there Whee. there Let's move this one over one.
What have we got? One block between each one. Yeah, that looks better. Is it there? Yeah, that's it, isn't it? Okay. I think that's a better base for this particular machine. Good. Okay. So what we can do now is put the cargo container and the reactor side by side. So that will need to spin down like that. Cargo container. Where do we put you? Number seven. Needs a small connector to this. Turn around to the side like that. And the big connector at the top so we can put the cockpit. Means the cockpit's going to be off center, but. Eh, yeah, I guess we can live with that. Not ideal by any standards, but we can go with it. That hasn't connected to the connector, has it? Come on, get a grip. Get a grip. This is not going to be the prettiest build I've ever done. Okay, so... Um, yeah. Drills, cargo, reactor, cockpit. So we need to plumb this thing in. Small conveyor. We need a small sorter, we need ejectors and we're going to need gyros, quite a few of them right, what I'm going to do is switch Bob on now while I go and get some hydrogen before I fall to my death preferably not in the big hole that we've left there um, and I'll back with you in a moment Later. Okay, so the task now is to get all the plumbing right. Um, and that's the key thing we need to do now. Without making everything fall off. Um, so, what I'm going to do first is connect up these drills. And I'm going to use small conveyor block and just put that in between all of them. That will serve two purposes. It will start off the plumbing and it will also attach those blocks together so when we start removing some of these um, steel blocks around it to change it to conveyor tubes they won't fall off. So what we need to do now is connect all of these through this system here and probably the easiest way to do that is to connect it through this connector on the side of this reactor. Um, and then when we put some cladding around this we can actually hide all the ugliness within some kind of shell because it's now sort of even on each side so one block of, of, of away from there one block away from there so we'll be able to hide the ugliness it'll just mean that the cockpit is going to be off center and I've just realized I haven't left somewhere for the connector oh, 
fiddlesticks. What I should have done with this. I oh, know I couldn't because. Oh, it's got a large character there. I just needed to spin this round that way once, didn't I? Oh, bear with me. I'll be back in a second while I just fix that. Okay, welcome back. Um, yeah, fixed. So, okay, now pop that cockpit on there, and I can pop a connector on the back of the cargo box. Connector, those, and more sorter and ejector. Okay. I'm to actually put the connector on the front, that way when I... No, oh, I can't. I've done that. I was thinking when I pile it back, it'll be easier to direct it to the other connector, but... Oh, hum. It is what it is. I just realised I'm going to have to take that off for the moment, just so I can put some uranium in it. Let me go and grab some. Back in a second. Yeah, when you build something like this, you have to manually feed a reactor first, otherwise the conveyor system won't work um, without power. So let's pop some uranium in there, get some power, and then we can get back to the task in hand. Okay, so we've got our connector there, um, drills are connected around that. So what I need to do is connect the drills this side and that side into this connector. Should be simple enough task. I can do that either through here or through the top of the drill. Um, and I think what I'll do is do it through the top of the drill. It's just there, I believe. Go and look at the finished drill to make sure I've got that right. I need to do these two. Um, I need to do these two because they're all connected anyway on each side. So let's pop one of those on each of that. And then we can plumb that around like this. connector there. Boom. Right, that's the whole system connected now. Um, so it doesn't take a lot of plumbing. The next thing we have to set up, the final thing, is obviously we still need to put thrust all the way around it and we need to put gyros, but the, the final bit of plumbing will be the ejectors. Now, I don't like to collect lots and lots of stone and bring it back. It adds to the weight of the vessel and, you know, we don't really use it for a lot. So what I do is set up ejector systems. Um, easy with a vertical miner because you can just eject you out of the back of the miner as you're mining. With the, sorry, with a horizontal miner you can do that. With a vertical miner it's a bit more tricky because you can't eject the stone as you're mining, otherwise the stone will just fall down and damage the drills and other parts of the vessel. So you eject the stone after you finish your mining. Um, so it's a case of just what I usually do, bring them out the back, and then when I'm, I just lean backwards in the, in the vehicle, switch on the ejectors, and just let the stone uh, fall out. But well, we've got to be careful it's not to damage anything along the way. So what we could do is set up an injector system from the back of this. So I brought two injectors out from here, out one and out, out one and out. That will still be within the, the frame of the vessel so it won't get damaged on the side of the shafts when we dig down. Yeah, that should work. So let's stick 
conveyors on those. And I'm going to put one in the middle as well, just for neatness sake. And let's get... What do we want? We want to... Yeah. Do it. So what we need then is convey a sorter and then an ejector. And I'll show you the setup for this once we do that. So yep, yeah, that's good, it doesn't stick out. And when we lean back, we only have to lean back a touch and then the stone will just fall out and miss the vehicle. Okay, so let's repeat that on this side. We've got two of them, get rid of it faster. Sorter, an ejector, boom, and they look like cool, fast boy racer exhausts as well. So I think we'll paint these flame red. <laughs> um, right, I think that's all the plumbing done for it now. Now those two tier one thrusters should be more than adequate to, to keep this upright, even when it's full. With plenty of storage, we should have plenty of power with this reactor. Um, we've plumbed through to all of the drills, all the way through there, through that up to there. We've got the ejector system in place. We have the connector, um, which is sticking out one, but that shouldn't be a problem because the drills will always make a bit more, dig a bit more area than they take up. Um, Okay, so all we need to do now is get the rest of our thrust and our gyros on. So let's put our thrust on first, I think. Now, I'm going to use the tier 1 thrusters, but just the small ones. And I tend not to put much, much more thrust on this. I usually put one in each direction. Um, just for manoeuvring. And I'm going to put two forward thrust just so we can get back a bit faster. So find suitable spots so it doesn't look odd. And I still need to think about putting cladding around it so I can't obscure the or obstruct the thrusters. So there we go. Two forward thrust, which should be more than enough to get us moving. Um, I'm going to put two rear facing thrust so that we've got a little bit of stopping power. And do you know what? They might as well be the opposite side, haven't they? So we go up, forward, back. I'm not going to put any down thrust on this because gravity will work. We're not going to remote control this one. So we just need side to side. So really, um, we only really need one of each side to side. We can always add more if we find we need it. Where are we going to put those? That shouldn't do any damage there. What I might do is just tuck them in and then we build the cladding around it. These side to side for us will just be hidden. Um, well that, that might damage that. Let's do it here. One that side, and one that side, and then that should be adequate. Let's put some gyros on this. Let's hide the gyros in here. Gyros be enough? I think it will. Yeah. Okay, before we jump in, release this bad boy, let's just jump in and make sure that we do have the power needed. We have the power. 
So where's our reactor? Producing 14.75 megawatts. Max power required 4.8 megawatts each. It might not be enough. Um, the small ones need 1.4. Hmm. Don't think that would be enough power. Power's always a problem when you're building a mining ship. Um, getting that balanced and getting it right. What I'm going to do is add some small reactors around these areas. Um, what I'll do first, I think, is layers. pop a conveyor block there and then I can plumb these reactors in and I can because they're really cheap to build I'm going to do just add four of them here And then when they've finished welding up, I can just transfer some of the uranium from this to these four. Jump in. Oh, it's going dark. That reminds me, I need some light. <laughs> Let's go to our infantry. Uh, reactors. Let's take 40 out of there. Pop that 40 into the large cargo container and it should evenly distribute between all of the reactors. Yep, okay, good. So, small reactors, what are they giving us? They're giving us 500 kilowatts each. Yeah, so that's another 2 megawatts. Hopefully, that'll be enough. Let's pop some lights on this big boy. Oops, nearly killed myself again. I'll leave the gyro there because we may need more gyros. Okay, some spotlights. It's probably sticking out a bit too much there. Let's pop one there. We do want some downward facing spotlights. It's going to eat up power as well, but yeah, you know, we can always turn them off when we're flying back. We want to be able to light up our way. Okay, we should have everything we need. Um, and what, we'll, as I said earlier, what I'll do is, is put some cladding around this. It's going to add to the mass of it, um, but we should be okay with that. We should have enough lift. Um, hide all this ugliness, and so it'll be like a, a shell around it, so it won't look as odd. Let's release it. Let's release the beast. and give it a test flight. Okay, so, whee, what do we got? Well, you can see down the right there, your power usage goes up to 86% when we're going up. If we're going up and forward, it maxes out, but that shouldn't be a problem. Ooh, what was that? And we've got good stopping power when we're heading down. We've got enough power for a day. Okay, we, we should be good. Gyros are good. We've got lots of removability on it. It's ugliest sin. 
Um, that, actually, the forward and reverse thrust isn't too bad. Hmm. Yeah, not too bad at all. Is there anything close by that we can grab just to give it a quick test? I think there was iron in that resource patch right there. Ore detector. That's always useful for a mining vessel, isn't it? I should put you Seems like a good spot, doesn't it? Let's move closer to Bob. Let's not destroy the solar panels on our way. There we go. Right. Let's head over to this. Oh, is that all detector finished? Yes. Okay. Let's go. Let's give it a quick test. Make sure it works okay. I mean, it, it, if I felt like I was struggling with power, particularly when it's full, what does it weigh at the moment? 40,000 kilograms. When this is full, it's going to weigh probably 100 and well, I don't think we'll be able to fill it up to a truth, but we'll just have to see what a safe weight is. There we go, that's some iron. Let's set up my drills, weapons and tools in there. Descend. Keep an eye on our level bar. Right click and clear some earth. It does tend to move around a bit when you're drilling, so you need to keep an eye on the level indicator just to keep yourself steady. But it does rip through the ground pretty well. Alright, we got some iron yet? We've probably we've completely missed the iron. What an idiot! That should hit it. This is why I don't remote these, because you do need to constantly um, adjust the controls to keep it level, keep it steady. I'm, I'm sure somebody's probably written a script for something like this, but, you know, I, I don't mind mining in ships like this. I don't like mining by hand, but when you've got a, a good purpose-built vessel for something like that, I quite enjoy it. And it's that, I guess it's that pleasure of building something that works. As you can see, it, it leaves a big hole in the ground. Right, we've got through to the iron. Oh, I better turn my... Before we do anything, I need to turn the ejectors off. Let's just quickly sort them out. So, for ejecting stone... Where are we? It comes under small. So, you conveyor sorters. Let's turn them off while I set this up. Just like any other sorter. What we're going to do is whitelist stone. So the only thing that can come through these sorters will be stone. We're going to have drain all. Remember to put it on this time. <laughs> and I'll leave it off at the moment. Just fix up the other one. So drain all. Whitelist stone. Supercharger. What I tend to do is set up 
the ejectors as a group. So the ejectors I'm going to turn off at the moment as well. So you eject ejectors need to collect all and throw out. This is why we switch it off before we set it up. So what we'll do now is highlight those and the conveyors, set them up as a group, ejectors. Um, what should we call this? <laughs> Minor one. <laughs> I really need some original names for these. Um, minor one genius it is genius isn't it okay so we now have our ejector set up as a group let's just go into our toolbar menu and pop those in toggle on and off they're off at the moment I'll set up the thrusters and everything as groups as well just so I can take put put them on and off when I need to so as you can see there the on the screen there the Ejectors are coming up as red so that we know they're off. So we'll start mining now properly, but we'll end up collecting loads of stone whilst we're at it. Um, and then when we're finished mining, we'll just pause somewhere, usually over the hole just dug, and eject all our stone. Yeah, one of the drawbacks of doing it with a vertical miner is, you, is the seams of resources tend to be quite thin um, so you get through it then what you need to do is move over drill down again and do it like that whereas if you you have a horizontal miner once you're in in the earth in a hole you can sort of drill along the seam of the, the resource so yeah, like I said, they have, they have their pros and cons. I find these vertical ones just a little bit easier to use, that's all. Let's start drilling properly. Keep an eye on our stability. So it's right click, just like your hand drill, right click to destroy stuff left click to drill stuff so let's see what we collected in that short time uh, iron so we've collected almost a hundred thousand iron and fifty thousand stone but you know it is what it is in just those two little patches we've got a hundred thousand and that's put our weight up by 15,000 kilograms. So we'll be able to collect tens of hundreds of thousands. Um, so what we do with these ejectors is we just lean back slightly. Switch on the ejectors and just let them drain out the stone. Is that a new effect on ejectors or is it hitting something? I think that's just a new effect. So what we should do sometime is, I, I want creative ways to take out these hostile bases. What we could do is fill this with stone, fly about a kilometer over one of these bases and just eject all the stone. That could work, couldn't it? So, I mean, that's quick. That was 50,000 kilograms of stone and it's gone. So, ejectors off. Let's head back and get our iron in the system. Yeah, those tiered thrusters are, are really good. Otherwise, you'd have to put tons of thrusters on this. Um, two large, ordinary thrusters would probably lift this okay, actually. Um, that's how I usually make them line ourselves up. Hopefully I've left enough room with this connector. I had to guess at the height of it. Let's try to land on top of the base and destroy it. Oh, I 
hard work. Yeah, we should be okay. Oh, let me just set, set up the connector. Connector. Minor one. And go to our G menu and pop that in. So we can lock it and unlock it. Oh, oh no, I don't want toggle on and off, do I? I want to switch lock. Um, we might as well just quickly set up our thrusters. Are they not called thrusters? They're called Atmos. Of space, but it'll be closer than that. Let's push back instead of down, shall we? There we go. Lock that, and we should see our stone, oh, sorry, our iron disappearing into the system. Yep, ended up in the refinery. Was our last, our last card container is already empty. So we can turn off the lights. We can turn off the thrusters, and we can get out. So yeah, there you go. I hope you found that useful. As I said, I'm more than happy to show you a horizontal minor build as well if you want to. Um, but that's how I usually do it, uh, my preferred mining system, personal preference, that's all it boils down to. I'll tidy this up a bit and give it our, what seems to have become our company vehicle colours <laughs> and design, a bit of ribbon, it's black and orange, um, and I'll do that off camera. Yeah, cool, and we've got a lot of iron processing. Right, once again, Thank you for watching. I hope you found it useful. Please press that thumbs up button if you did. Um, it really helps the channel grow. And please subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you all later.